Hi there, Adnan here from Polygon Flow. In our last video, I gave you a brief overview of Graphen, a visual coding software for artists. Today, we're going to focus on its companion app, Graphen Library, a plugin that sits right into your 3D software or game engine, giving you access to tools made with Graphen, but with an intuitive interface instead of nodes or code. Our focus today will be on Ecotope, an extensive tool made completely with Graphen and available to you right away for free. As always, this won't be a time lapse or marketing video, but an actual tutorial on how to use the tool. So go to polygonflow.io to download Graphen and follow along with me. Once you download and install Graphen, you'll have access to Graphen library from your Maya shelf right here. In Unreal Engine, you'll find the Graphen icon right in the middle of your toolbar. To get started, let's click on the Graphen icon here, which will open Graphen library. Here, you'll see the tool Ecotope Scatter, and if we click on the tool, we're going to see this interface. This tool was made completely from scratch with Graphen, and yet this is the only thing that you'll ever have to interact with. So let's collapse this panel, and also our shelf in the process. I have this basic scene here, which is just a road with a bunch of curves in the middle and some obstacles along the way. And we're going to be scattering these different objects on our road and utilizing all the features available in Ecotope. To get started, let's select our terrain. And if we look here, we'll see scatter surface. This is the surface on which we're going to be scattering objects on. I can either select it in the viewport and click on the menu and then add selected objects. Or I could go to the Maya shelf and middle mouse drag from the shelf onto the button right here. Next, I have these plants that I want to scatter. In this case, I'm going to be moving them to the scatter objects, which are the objects that we're going to be scattering. And if I click here and click on add selected objects, then hit play, we're going to see grass all over our terrain. Now I can collapse this menu here. And if I move the density slider, you'll notice that nothing changes. And this is because by default, the tool only updates when you hit play. You can easily fix that by going to runtime mode, which will trigger an update anytime you move a parameter or a geometry in the scene. So now that we've scattered our plants, let's collapse this group and go to the directional masking. What I want to do is remove the plants right here that are sticking in this angled area of our road. So let's just enable mask by angle and this will automatically remove them for us. If we zoom out, you'll notice that we have a couple of curves on our terrain. I'll just select the terrain and then invert my selection. And you can see our curves are right here and they're fairly basic, but they outline the road. And here's how we're going to use them. We're going to go to path masking and we have curves here as an input. So I'll just add the curves and you'll automatically see a path cleared near the curves here have the width slider to control our curve masking and what I want to do is not scatter on top or on the road but just in the corners so if you wanted to scatter on the road only you could just flip the reverse option here and that would scatter the plants only on the road but what we want to do is activate not just reverse but also mask by borders this will ensure that we only scatter plants at the borders right here next I want to add another set of plans on our terrain and to do that I'm going to select the object here and go to the menu and create a new instance. Graphen library works with this instance system where you can have various iteration of the same tool doing different things. In this case the menu is empty again and if we add our objects and the plants we want to scatter we should now have them all over the surface. And just like before, we can select our curves and mask them. In this case, we won't be using the mask by border feature. We'll just increase the width until the plants are only available in these specific areas. Now, if I activate transparency, you'll notice that we also have plants right under these boxes. The volume masking feature allows you to remove any objects inside specific objects. So in this case, I can just select these different cubes and then I'd add them as volumes right here. As you can see, the plants were removed right away. Once I'm done with the volume masking, I'm going to select these pebbles right here and I'll create a third instance of our tool. 
And in this case, I want to scatter pebbles right around the edges over here. So let's just add them right here as our scatter objects and our road as our scatter surface. And just like before, if we select the curves and add them in the path masking menu, we're going to have them available just right here. Now, as you can see, we also have them available under our plants, which is not what we want. So let's use the mask by border feature and just play with the width and border width parameter until we're satisfied with the value we have. Perfect. Now the scattering itself is really uniform and we can go to noise mask in here and just enable that. And this will create a bunch of breakups on the surface. And usually I just leave the parameter as is. And then I could tweak the seed, for example, to get different variations or work with the min and max clamp to remove or add more points. The feature set we've used to create this environment represents just a tiny fraction of what Ecotope is capable of. For instance, one really exciting parameter for artists is the scale settings, which allow you to scale objects not just with noise parameters but also gradients. So here, if I set my minimum scale to something like 0.2 and the maximum to 2, I can use my gradient slider to make objects near the volume smaller and objects further from them bigger. Now if I select the volume and move it, you can see the gradient updating at runtime and non-destructively. We've created an extensive documentation for Ecotope that you can access right in the description below. So feel free to check that out and also join our Discord where you can show us what you're building, ask questions around how features work, or simply give us feature requests. Long term, I really believe that Ecotope can give you every single feature you need to make world building a no-brainer. And with time, we're going to be adding more features like grid and radial scattering and so many more features that are going to make world building easier than ever. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.